Hi, I'm Alex and welcome back to the Boathouse Paddle series where we talk about everything concerning paddle. Today we're going to have a look at the new Webhook Simulator. Now if you've used Paddle Classic before, you know there was a Webhook Simulator there where you could choose one of the paddle events and send it to any endpoint, your system, your application, your software, to test the integration. Recently the Webhook Simulator was brought to paddle billing as well, but not only can you do what you could do in Paddle Classic, you can do even more now with a whole fleet of scenario testing, which we'll have a look at. Now, the first step is to create a notification endpoint. You do need one of them stored in the system to be able to use the webhook simulator. And you'll notice there is a new column here on the right called usage. So an endpoint can be of three types, basically. Simulation only, which is you can only get events on this webhook via the simulator that we're going to have a look at. Platform only means this can only be used for real platform events. Now, when I say real, it just means the platform you're on. The sandbox platform events are still platform only events. The production ones are platform only, but it means you can't use them in a simulator context, or you can use them for both platform and simulation. Now, if you're doing simulation only, which I'll do for this endpoint, you'll want pretty much all of the events selected here because the simulation will determine which events you send. But for the platform, you can choose, of course, which notification endpoints you have, and then the simulator will only send those events to that endpoint as well. So the webhook simulator is available under the developer tools under this new simulations tab down here. So if you go into that and hit new simulation, you can see the two ways of using this and the one big new feature that they've added. The single event here on the left is the same as you would have done traditionally in Paddle Classic. So you've got your list of events here, for example, a subscription created event. And if I go ahead and select my destination and call this a test one, I can go ahead and see, okay, it creates this sort of simulation environment. If I click run simulation, it will send uh, payload to my endpoint. In this case, this endpoint is just a demo endpoint. I can have a look what was posted here. You can see this is the paddle event information, basically the same that you have here. And you can see, okay, this is the request that went out and the response that this demo endpoint gave me. I can, of course, go ahead and change these values. So if I just change them here, they will be stored. So I can replay the event. Now I will have in my second event, you can see here the test value that I just added. And if you go into simulations and reload that simulation, that previous payload will be stored. So it saves whatever the last one was that you had. You can of course reset it to the default. So the default is pretty much what the event would send if the real platform sent it, depending on a couple of scenarios, of course, the, in a subscription created, you'll have different items, different prices, different products, depending on what's configured in your system. But basically, the payload here is what you what you can expect for a subscription created event. Now, let's have a look at the other version of this. So I'm going to go ahead and create a new simulation. And now I'm going to use the scenario endpoint. Now, this is much more complex. Um, it's not a single event that you're going to be sent, but you're going to be sent a, basically the scenario, the events that the platform will send you if this happened in reality. So let's go ahead and say subscription created. And you can see these are the events that your endpoint is going to get. And it is the order of events that the platform will send you if it was a real transaction, for example, or in this case, a, a real subscription. So I'm going to go ahead and again, choose my destination. Let's call this test two. And the simulator now, the initial screen looks the same, but if I run the simulation, you can see the big difference that's happening here. You can see one after the other, these events are being sent to my endpoint, just like the real platform would do. And these can, of course, as with the single events, be changed here. So you can change this out to have a, a different payload. You can basically recreate the full set of events that the platform sends you. Now, why would you do that? You've basically just sent yourself a number of events. Let's look at one of them here. You've got the transaction updated event that came in. The interesting part is using this as part of a unit tests. 
you can start these simulations that you've stored from the API. So let's say you create a checkout end-to-end -end unit test and you want Paddle to react or send you those events just as they come in, simulating what happens when a customer comes. You can do that now and creating your own payload with your own prices. And you can also see what does your endpoint respond just as you would with a single event. It's a really nice way to automate the testing, the testing of the checkout integration. That's it. That's the new webhook simulator. I think it's a real great improvement and Let's see if there's future improvements to this, like maybe editing the scenario. At the moment, you only have the five default scenarios. We'll see what comes. Until then, see you soon.